In this video, I will show you how to overclock your Mio Mini and Mio Mini Plus running Onion OS. I will also be answering the questions, what is Mio Mini overclocking? What are the risks that come with it? And ultimately, should I overclock? Okay, let's get on with it. When we talk about overclocking the Mio Minis, it is the process of boosting the CPU speed, also known as clock rate, to improve its performance. The stock clock rate of the Mio Mini and the Mio Mini Plus is 1200 MHz. This can be increased in intervals of 100 MHz. However, they become unstable at a certain point, which will increase the chance of the device crashing or freezing up. The highest stable overclock rate for the original Mio Mini is 1600 MHz, while for the Mio Mini Plus, it is 1800 MHz. No two CPUs are the same. So some people may be able to push an extra 100 MHz higher and still be stable, or some may find that they need to go down 100 MHz to be stable. If you have ever used the DS emulator Drastic on your Mio Mini, then you have already seen overclocking in action. As it has built-in overclocking set to 1500 MHz, but this can be increased. Now, you may ask yourself, what are the risks? When it comes to overclocking any CPU, there is a misconception that increasing the CPU clock rate can permanently damage the hardware. This is extremely rare. What can damage the hardware is increasing the power or voltage going to the CPU to try to make it more stable at a higher clock rate. And that is not something that we will be doing. So the worst that can happen at a higher clock rate is increased crashes or freezing of the device. Neither of these should harm the device long-term. If this is something you experience after overclocking, all you have to do is decrease your overclock value by 100 megahertz and repeat until your device is stable. Other common fears of overclocking, such as increased heat generation or faster battery drain, are not an issue with the Mio Minis. This is not something you have to take my word for, as I will be posting the links in the description to what you have been seeing on the screen. These are the posts and the results of tests from one of the developers of Onion OS by the name of Schmertz. So if you're interested in a more in-depth look, please check these out. You may be asking, what are the benefits of overclocking? The performance benefits from overclocking are substantial. I will go over some comparisons now to show you the difference. In this example, I will be running Pokemon Unbound on the Mio Mini Plus at the stock speed of 1200 megahertz. As you can see here, I am using the MGBA core. Frame skip is set to off. I have the perfect GBA overlay enabled by one player insert coin. And I have the GBA video offset filter turned on. As you can see in here, when I enter a battle or when any heavy graphical attacks are used, I get major slowdowns. Now, while standing still in this spot using fast forward, I am getting between 70 and 80 FPS. Okay, now with the overclock setting set to 1800 megahertz on the Mio Mini Plus. Again, I will show you I am running the MGBA core, frame skip set to off, the perfect GBA overlay enabled, and the GBA video offset filter turned on. As you can see, the slowdown from combat is completely gone. And standing in the same spot as last time, I am now getting mostly between 100 to 110 FPS. That is roughly a 20 to 30% performance increase. I find this to be a huge difference. I'm just going to show off a few more examples before we get into the install. The world. Humans can do nothing against the power of the evil mutant. It'll aim to destroy the world. Humans can do nothing against the power of the evil mutant. Thank you. 
Overclocking either of the Mio Minis is as easy as adding one text file to your SD card. First, connect your SD card to your computer, navigate to the RetroArch folder, create a text file in this folder, and name it cpuclock.txt, all lowercase. You will then open this file and type in a four digit number representing the clock rate. For original Mio Mini users, you will want to set a number between 1300 to 1700. 1600 is considered to be the recommended stable option. For Mio Mini Plus users, you will want to set a number between 1300 and 1900. 1800 is the considered recommended stable option. After you type in the number, save the file, and you are done. You can eject the card, plug it back into your device. It is also possible to just target one emulator core with the overclock by going from the root folder to saves, current profile, config, then select the core that you want to be affected, then either create or drag your CPU clock text file here. When you do this, you can keep an overclock file in the RetroArch folder and it will be used as a fallback if you have not added an overclock file to one of these cores. If you are on a Mio Mini Plus, you can also increase the max CPU clock range for DS games by going onto the SD card, navigating to EMU, NDS, opening resources, and then opening the settings.json file. Find the max CPU field, you can set this to 1800 or 1900, then save the file. Then when you are in the DS emulator, you can change this on the fly by going to settings, hitting the menu button, plus start. Before I cover if I think overclocking is right for you, if you have enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. Should you overclock? This mainly depends on the type of games you play. If you have noticed slowdowns while playing any arcade games, ports, Game Boy Advance, or even PS1 games, this might be the needed performance boost to fix those issues. So for me, it was a no-brainer. Now, if you are someone who plays mainly NES, SNES, and Game Boy, you won't notice an impact other than some extra fast forwarding speed. The other thing to take into consideration is that you may have a crash or two before you find the stable overclock rate for your device. You can just pick the stable clock speed or even go 100 MHz lower and you most likely won't have an issue with this, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, if your Mio Mini does lock up or freezes, you will want to hold down the power button for 10 to 15 seconds or until it turns off. If it is still not powering down, you can disconnect the battery. If you end up having to do this, make sure you disconnect it at the socket and not pull on the battery cables to avoid damaging the connector. Then place your SD card back into your computer, navigate to the RetroArch folder, edit the CPU clock text file, reduce the number by 100, and save the file. Also, if you want to remove the overclock, you can simply delete this file. I want to thank the Onion OS team, and also specifically Schmertz, for the time he took to test and write up the information on these overclocks. And please let me know if I'm saying your name incorrectly. It really is great to be able to have more performance out of these awesome devices. Alright, that covers about everything I know about overclocking Mio Minis. If there is anything I missed, or something you want to add, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you for watching.